What happens when Samsung's biggest smartphone ever goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with HTC's current flagship? I'm Taylor Martin, this is Pocket Now, and this is the Samsung Galaxy Mega 6.3 versus the HTC One. The Samsung Galaxy Mega 6.3 and HTC One are symbolic of the respective situations HTC and Samsung are currently in. The One for HTC is a new take on the smartphone industry, a fresh start which will hopefully pull the company out of a deep rut. And so far, the reception of the One has been mostly positive. It's a fair competitor, not a serious threat, to the Galaxy S4. The Galaxy Mega 6.3 is a perfect indication of how well Samsung is performing, how it's currently poised to experiment and test waters without the fear of going bankrupt. The HTC One is a make-or-break device for HTC that's fortunately doing well for the company. The Galaxy Mega 6.3, on the other hand, is a completely unnecessary smartphone that only caters to a niche market. And this is how those two smartphones compare. In terms of hardware, there are very few similarities between these two phones. There is no denying the Mega 6.3 is part of Samsung's Umbrella Galaxy brand. It shares a virtually identical design with the Galaxy S4, only on a much larger scale. The sides and back for the Mega 6.3 are slick, hyperglazed plastics with fake textures. The chrome trim around the edges is a faux brushed metal, and the front and back bear a dot pattern that breaks up the monotony of an otherwise plain Jane design. The face holds Samsung's typical navigation button pattern, a physical home button in the center, and capacitive buttons to each side, menu to the left, and back to the right. The HTC One's design and build quality are distinctly superior. Instead of lightweight, flimsy plastic, the HTC One is constructed of a sturdy aluminum. The face of the device bears two large speaker grills, one at the top and one at the bottom, for the boom sound speakers with Beats Audio. And unlike most Android phones, there are only two navigation buttons, back on the left and home on the right. It has a curved back, which makes it slip into the center of your palm comfortably. But the power button placement on the top left corner makes it difficult to power the device off and on without adjusting your grip. Speaking of grip, the HTC One is just the right size for many to use comfortably with a single hand. With a display that measures 4.7 inches diagonally, it's the upper limit in screen size for most people. The Galaxy Mega 6.3 is, plain and simple, a two-handed smartphone. While the button placement makes it easy to adjust volume and toggle standby easily with one hand, Reaching opposing corners of the display is difficult, if not impossible, without the use of a second hand. The contrast between these two carry down into the specifications. The HTC One comes with a 1.7GHz quad-core Snapdragon 600 chipset, 2GB of RAM, 32GB or 64GB of fixed storage with a no microSD card slot, a non-removable 2300mAh battery, a 4 ultra-pixel camera, and a 4.7-inch 1080p SLCD3 display with a pixel density of 469 ppi. On the inside, the Galaxy Mega 6.3 has a 1.7GHz dual-core Snapdragon 400 chip, 1.5GB of RAM, 8 or 16GB of storage with a microSD card slot for up to 64 additional gigabytes, and a removable 3200mAh battery. Around back, it has an 8MP camera, and the front equips a giant 6.3-inch 720p TFT display for a total of 233 pixels per inch. The HTC One has dual speakers on the front, dubbed Boom Sound, which are notably louder than the still very loud rear speaker on the Mega. Both also come in LTE variants, though our HTC One and Mega are HSP Plus only models. And they both feature Wi-Fi BGN AC and NFC. There's a never-ending debate over whether replaceable and expandable features are necessary or a must. But one thing there's no debate over is which of these two devices wins in terms of display. Flat out, the HTC One's 1080p Super LCD 3 takes the cake in virtually every category, save for sheer size. The LCD panel on the One is slightly brighter, more vibrant, literally twice as dense, and thus noticeably more crisp. Both displays offer very wide viewing angles and similar contrast. The obvious benefit to the Mega 6.3, aside from the inferior display quality, is its size and the DPI setting. Unlike other extra-large smartphones, the Mega features a lower DPI, making on-screen elements smaller instead of simply stretching them over more pixels, meaning most applications display much more content per page. If you find yourself needing more room to type or simply want a gigantic display in your hands and pocket, the Galaxy Mega is the best choice. If, instead, you want a one-handed phone with a superior display, build, specs, and design, the One is the clear winner. These two smartphones are no more alike in terms of software than they are in hardware. The HTC One comes running the most recent version of Sensui atop Android 4.1. The Galaxy Mega 6.3 comes with a dumbed-down version of the latest TouchWiz over Android 4.2, meaning it has all the latest Android features, such as lock screen widgets, Daydream, and more. 
The reason we call the Mega's TouchWiz version dumbed down is because it's lacking many of the new features announced alongside the Galaxy S4 earlier this year. While it offers air view and smart stay, it's missing smart pause, smart rotation, smart scroll, air gesture, drama shot, dual camera, and many, many more features. With the latest version of Sense, HTC toned down its customization some, but in other ways it added to the Sense experience. Two major changes are Blink Feed, a persistent social and news aggregator that resides on your home screen, and the App Drawer, which is a paginated vertical grid only three icons wide. There are no quick toggles located in the notification shade, no lock screen widgets, no daydream mode, and recent apps, which are accessed by double tapping the home key, is a heavily customized card view where you flick application previews upwards to dismiss or close. Hmm, where have we seen that before? We're not convinced the changes made in Sense are actually useful. Instead, they feel more like changes made for the sake of changing. Samsung's TouchWiz software is certainly more overbearing than Sense, and changes to the stock software reach much deeper into the system such as the Tab Settings app. And yes, many of Samsung's features are mostly novelties, or useless features added for sales floor marketing. But on the other hand, many of those added features have a purpose. The vast settings toggles in the notification shade, for instance. Or the quick access to all downloaded applications in the app drawer, so you can quickly filter out all built-in applications. Despite the odd button layouts, there are quick ways to open Google Now on both as well. With the HTC One, simply long press the home button. If you're on the home screen, you can simply long press the menu button on the Galaxy Mega. But if you're already in an application, the quickest way to access Google Now is by long pressing the home button and selecting the Google search icon in the middle at the bottom of the display. At every turn, there are conceptual differences between each device's software. And while it's definitely more heavily laden than Sense, we have to give the edge to TouchWiz on the Galaxy Mega 6.3. And if you can't come to grips with the Sense software and older Android firmware on the HTC One, it's worth mentioning that the Google Edition One will be available in the near future running pure stock Android 4.2 with Beats audio support. When it comes down to performance, the HTC One has a pretty significant leg up. Both load applications, switch apps, and return home very quickly, thanks to the newest Snapdragon chipsets. And gaming is smooth on both devices as well. But the Mega 6.3 is equipped with a Snapdragon 400, a dual-core chip, and the One has the Snapdragon 600 with 4 cores, though both are clocked at 1.7 GHz. Synthetic benchmarks show that the HTC One is simply more capable in terms of processing power. It can simply handle more. And in 2.2, the One managed to consistently score around 24,000, while the Mega maxed out at about 13,000 and averaged around 11,000. And in Quadrant Standard, the Mega maintained a 6,000 average to the One's 10,000 average. It's the same story in Geekbench 2, and in other tests. It's to be expected. Both devices come in LTE variants, but our units are HSPA Plus running on AT&T HSPA Plus in the Charlotte metro area. Through several speed tests, both devices averaged around 6 megabits per second down and 1 megabit per second up, though the peak speed for the one exceeded 7 megabits per second. Battery life, even with the power saver mode enabled, isn't one of the HTC One strong suits. On better days, we can last most of the day on a single charge through normal usage but under heavy usage, the battery drops off rather quickly, especially if you crank the brightness up. The Galaxy Mega is sort of the same scenario so far, but it has a much larger battery keeping the show running, 900 mAh more, to be exact, and that makes a significant difference. For more on the Mega 6.3 battery life, keep an eye out for the full review next week. Finally, cameras. When it comes to software, the HTC One and Galaxy Mega 6.3 share a lot of the same features. The interfaces are quite different, but the end result is the same. A fairly lightweight, nimble interface with a ton of features hidden beneath the surface. The one has a nice trick up its sleeve though. Zoe. It's a feature that's enabled within the camera app. Each time you press the shutter button, it takes a short video. And all the stills and photos from that brief period are automatically turned into a relatively high production video with a generic sound clip. It's truly an awesome feature. In terms of quality, despite the low megapixel count, the one wins by a fairly wide margin. The Mega's camera isn't necessarily bad, but it seems poorly optimized. It doesn't handle various situations quite as well as the One. For example, autofocus had trouble locking onto certain things quickly, whites were easily blown out, and despite putting out higher res images, the added quality just isn't there. The One's camera is more balanced and offers more detail, surprisingly, and performs better in low light. In other words, each of the One's 4 million pixels are put to great use, whereas the Mega's 8 megapixels are pixel for pixel less efficient. These two devices are clearly stark contrasts from one another, in almost every way. The Mega is an excessive, versatile device aimed at a small target demographic, and it's also, more or less, a test device for Samsung in public beta. 
The One is a make-or-break device from HTC, and the attention to detail shows. It's aimed at a much more broad audience, the general consumer. The HTC One overall wins this battle by a fairly wide margin. It's not that it's necessarily a much better device, but it's certainly more polished, more well-rounded, and will appeal to many more people than a phone that promises to stretch your pockets. However, if the One is simply too small for your tastes or your hands, give the Mega 6.3 a go. You may like it, but if you're after something a little more logical, stick with the One. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and click the subscribe button and follow us in all the typical places, Twitter, Google+, and Facebook at Pocket Now. Before we go, we'd like to thank our friends at Negri Electronics for lending us a Galaxy Mega 6.3 for this comparison and for the review. As always, I'm Taylor Martin, and I'll see you next time.